So here's the cam with all its teeth in, compared to the one that we took out of the camera which certainly does not have them all its teeth. So let's have a go with this. Uh, ignore the shape of the spring on this one, it's just been a bit mutilated. This is just for a tool for me to use. So I'll plug that in there like it would be on the camera and I'll rotate this clockwise. The shutter opens. If I release this, allow this to come down, the shutter closes. As the capping plate comes up, it would allow this rack to move. That would trigger the shutter and allow the shutter to fire. And at that stage, the shutter blades are closed again, ready for the next exposure. So on the face of that, we have a working shutter. Doesn't mean it'll work well, but it does work. Looking at the state of the body, that appears okay. The mirror does not look pretty, but I think I can improve it slightly, and certainly well enough to use. Everything else appears pretty much to be in place. And the only thing that I've identified is this, which is very, very gummy. That's uh, lost a lot of its teeth. Now, how did it come to lose its teeth? That is one of those million dollar questions, really. We can think a lot about it. One way that you can certainly do things like that, we talked about the front rings and the need for them to be accurately put in place. If someone had the front rings off, and if they had this piece in the wrong place, so that it was trying to move beyond its normal range, potentially if you cranked on the advance, that would load things up. Something's going to have to give. And the teeth on that pinion are certainly small and uh, likely to go first. But that's only speculation. We've got no, uh, no reason to put a lot of faith in the idea that that's happened. What can I tell from looking at this? Well, it doesn't look to me, this looks like it's all original to me. It doesn't look like anyone has had that. To service the shutter, you've got to remove that wire. When you remove that wire, typically it's going to be painted again, possibly, and it might even be painted in black, but it's normally not as neat as the original job. So quite possibly the shutter has never been serviced. Which is a conundrum, because the leatherettes are certainly severely glued back to the body. Somebody had certainly removed this patch here, and there's no reason to remove that patch if you knew what you were doing. Is it possible that someone removed all the leatherettes from the front and gave up? I don't know. I don't think that's the, I think there's two different types of adhesive here. This would be the original, that shiny patch, and this stuff, whatever it is. It's flaky sort of stuff. Okay, so we found out what the problem with the camera was. We know that the camera also has a dead meter. Is that a coincidence? Given the state of this camera, I think that probably this one served as a parts source. This is a camera that had a failed shutter, for whatever reason, that someone stole the meter from it to use for another camera. And they put their dead meter back into this one. And then it's found its way out into the world again, and arrived here. I'm quite confident it's not a camera that I bought. I have an awful lot of the reflex trees that I've accumulated over time have come to me uh, as gifts, as uh, parts cameras I might be able to use. 
and an awful lot of those parts cameras I've been able to return back into good working order and uh, let loose on the world again. This is a particularly bad example. It was clear that something was seriously broken. I thought it was the, it says on my piece of paper here, probable broken transfer shaft to the shutter. And that's exactly as it turned out to be. All of these parts will need to be cleaned up and uh, put back together. And if we replace this little cam with one that's got its teeth, I'm pretty confident that this will be a, a working camera again. Of course, it's still stuck with its dead meter, but uh, we might be able to steal one from something else for it, as I'm sure was done to this. I'm going to talk to you about the sequence of actions with the shutter on the retina reflex cameras. It's uh, it seems daunting. It's, it's a reasonably simple operation once you understand what's happening. So the first thing that happens, I'll just get those out of the way. Here's a body, only mo mostly complete. But basically what happens is when you cock the shutter, obviously you're winding the film on. At the same time you're pulling that frame of film through the film gate, you're cocking the shutter action, and various things take place. So, as you start to swing the film advance lever, you'll notice this tab here, which opens the lens up to full aperture for viewing. That will start to move pretty much straight away. This might be not be the best example, this camera's a bit marked up. But basically that starts moving pretty much straight away. Moves down towards the bottom of its slot. We're about halfway through the stroke. At this stage the capping plate has dropped. So the first things that happen is the capping plate drops to cover the aperture at the back. Make sure no light can get through. And this starts to, well, this thing here that opens the lever, the lens up to full aperture, that starts to move. Then you'll see the shutter blades start to open and uh, the mirror will descend down into the viewing position. So that shutter's open. The mirror is now down in the viewing position. I've reached the end of the stroke and the film advance lever comes back to the rest position. So at that stage the lens is full aperture. This lever is all the way down at the bottom of its range. The mirror is down in the viewing position. And if we were to look in the back of the camera, the capping plate is covering the aperture there so no light can get through to the film. So that, uh, that all sounds fairly straightforward. We'll get into the details shortly. And then when you release the shutter, the whole process pretty much unwinds. So the first thing that happens, let's get this absolutely good. So when you press the shutter release, let's get this piece here. This is, this is the shutter section here. I'll just cock that. So it's in the cocked position. I've got no tension on this spring, so it shouldn't wind down much by itself. It's only driven by the spring inside the shutter. When you press the shutter release on the outside of the camera front here, it's connected to this lever here. And this lever, this arm, couples to the components. This, this arm here couples to the components in the camera body. And this little arm here, that goes right through to the shutter and releases the shutter mechanism and starts it off. So as soon as you depress the shutter, you are releasing the shutter mechanism and that immediately allows the rack here to travel across. The shutter blades are now closed and at that stage 
the mirror is coming up. That's triggered. The mirror rises. As the mirror rises, at the same time, the capping plate is being allowed to rise. Now the capping plate is held down by two things. It's held down by a catch here, on this side, which is released by this tab here on the shutter release. And it's also held, I'll get this down again, it's also held by the mirror. The mirror operates a lever here which only lifts, let's get that capping plate released. Yeah, as the, ca as the mirror rises, it will release the capping plate. And there's the capping plate, just followed it up. So as the mirror is mostly, at least half the way up its travel, it releases the capping plate. So the mirror rises first, the capping plate follows it. When the capping plate rises, it strikes this lever here. As it strikes that lever, let's get this thing back in place. As it strikes that lever, it lifts it, and there's a little rivet at this point, which blocks the action of this little tooth rack. So as this lifts, it allows that rack to move forward, and as that move forward, under the impetus of this spring that's on this thing, it will allow the shutter to fire for its set shutter speed. And of course then the shutter's done its job. And at this stage, we have the shutter closed. The lens will be closed down to the set aperture. And the mirror will be in the up position. The capping plate is in the up position, and that's where we started out. And as soon as you start, you swing your film advance, the whole process starts again. The first two actions that happen are that the capping plate drops, and at the same time, the tab here starts to move to open the lens up to full aperture. After that, the shutter blades start to open. At this stage the capping plate is completely closed so no light can reach the film. This tab opening the lens up to full aperture is still moving and this action just keeps taking place until the shutter is fully open it's cocked and it's in the open position. Now the camera's fit for viewing because we have the capping plate blocking any light path to the film. We have the mirror down there so that you get the reflected view through the lens up into the finder. And of course the shutter is fully wide open so everything's good there. And once you release the shutter the whole process starts all over. So, it's not a complicated sequence. It does mean that if something's gone wrong and you know the sequence of things, you're in a better position to understand where the fault might lie and what you'll need to do about it. The mirror here is not in very good condition. It's, uh, there's a lot of fine marks on there. And most of those fine marks have the look of uh, fungus. It's that fine tracery, tracery sort of pattern that you see on things. But there's a bit of haze on there too, which you might see. And it's certainly a bit smeary right here. I think that someone's had a finger on that at some stage, or it's been wiped with a cotton bud, or both. There's a little bit of dust on the surface. I'm going to see if I can clean that glass. This is a front surface silvered mirror, of course, and anything you touch it with is likely to scratch it. They're incredibly delicate. I've got some CRC Heavy Duty ElectroClean, and that's worked for me in the past. I'm not sure how well it will work on this one. 
It depends whether there's any trace of grease on there. If it's a, a greasy haze, it may well clear it, otherwise it may have no effect. I'm going to give it a squirt and we'll see what happens. I only use this stuff when there's no leatherette about for this to land on. Leatherette doesn't like it. Well, I've shifted the dirt, the dust off it, the loose stuff, but I can't say that that's made any otherwise useful impression on that. So that, that mirror is going to stay imperfect, I think. I don't think there's any point in trying to do much with that. I don't think I can clean it any better than that. You can judge how well it's going to work simply by looking at uh, reflections in the mirror. Here I'm just looking at it and I can see out the window here, I can see the trees and the leaves behind. And so I'm able to judge what the contrast of the image is likely to be through that mirror. And uh, I believe that would probably function very well. If it was very dull, I'd have to replace that mirror. Even though it doesn't look very pretty, this one will function very well indeed. Well, before I strip this camera down and service it, as it obviously needs it, now that we've discovered what was wrong with it, which was a broken one of these, I'll replace it with this good one, reassemble the camera. Um, I'm not going to put the leatherettes back on, I just want to see that the op mechanism will run and it will give us a better idea of the general condition of the camera. Um, I don't think it's going to be marvellous but it'll be a lot better than it was when it didn't function at all because of this stripped gear. So let me begin. The first thing I'm going to do is put a base plate back on the camera so that we can have the film advance and so forth working so that we can check things as we go. Now I'll have to put my levers back here, the lock lever in particular, the frame counter here and this camera of course was missing the spring that belongs in here and so I've got a replacement spring to go there. Now the camera would have worked after a fashion without that spring but it would never have worked well. So and that is most definitely was missing. Uh, it can't fall out by itself. It can only have been missing from the time the camera had, was last repaired and somebody had had the base plate off it. However, let's start getting these bits and pieces back into the body. Here is the spring for the frame counter. Here is the lever for the frame counter. I'm going to make sure I get this around the right way. I'll just hook that back over there. Get the lever in place. And hook the spring into position behind the lever like that. So that's seated there correctly. Now let's find the other bits and pieces. Here is the lock lever and the lock lever spring should be here. The long thin one, got it. So the lock lever drops in there other way round. The spring drops into the hole. I'm just checking to see if I've missed anything. It looks like I've got everything I need on the base plate and I'll put the base plate on. have to get this little button needs to couple up with the hole on the arm there 
and the end of the film advance needs to come around so it's not caught behind that plate. Okay, that's all good. And I can get some screws in there to hold that in position. Now this base plate is one that I've prepared years ago to help me work on cameras like this. I'll show you in a second its special feature. You can do this without altering a base plate, but this is much more convenient. If you're not going to use a, a mutilated base plate like this, you can put a piece of tape over the top of that spring that we saw to keep it from getting away, but you will have trouble with your film advance. It much, works much smoother if you have a base plate in place. I'll show you its special feature. It's very simple. The special feature is the front edge of the base plate is cut away. And the reason it's cut away is that's to allow me to drop the front panel in without a fight because the chrome trim comes over the bottom edge of the front panel. So that's all that's involved in that. Let's get the film advance lever on this. If I can get this lined up, that's better. So all of this will have to come apart again so I can clean and uh, lubricate things appropriately. But having identified the major fault, this is a, the right time to to check and well, just confirm that actually I've got the diagnosis right, if you like. Okay, now there's a spring here, which is very good at getting away, and it's doing its best to get away right here at the moment. Got to get that hooked into position. It sits just there. That spring is very good at getting away, you've got to watch it like a hawk. I typically, if I'm servicing one of these cameras, I take that spring off and put it somewhere safe while I'm working on the camera. And it saves disasters. Okay, so the body's good. I can set my meter position, because we know that it should be with that cut out, which is painted black in this case, which tells me someone's surfaced the front. We on this one it didn't look like the shutter had been serviced but the leatherettes had certainly been off at some stage and the only there are two reasons you'd take the front off one of these cameras one is to service the shutter and the other would be to replace the meter cord if you'd broken the meter cord so the meter cord has certainly been replaced because that black paint or lacquer that you see there is not normal Normally that would be red. They used, Kodak used red and anyone servicing the cameras would typically do the same. That's been done by someone. Um, we know it's not the right colour. It wasn't done by Kodak, so someone has had that off. It looks like the shutter has never been serviced, so someone's had the front off the camera to replace the meter cord most likely, and that's why we see the strange adhesive for the leatherette. Anyway, on to the next step. Need to get the top back in position. Got to get, got to get the uh, cocking action going here, so we need all these pieces in place. See if I can get this in position. Just needs to slide under that brass wheel. I might lift that brass wheel slightly to allow me to get that to happen. That's happening now. Do that screw back up. Okay, that's good. So 
So we want the strap plug at this end. We want the spacer. It goes behind that rack. Here is the strap plug. Let's find these parts. Doing their best to hide. Okay, there we have our spacer. One tooth should be engaged at this end. The screw that goes in there's a shoulder, it's got a thick shoulder on it which acts as the guides that bush and probably acts as a uh, pivot for the bush if it revolves around it. We'll get another screw in here. Probably you could do with a longer one than that. That one looks a handy length and it's clean so it probably came from the top of the camera. That'll do nicely. So those two pieces are in place. Now the piece here that holds down the cocking rack at this end that needs to go in place. Put two screws in that. Now I can check the action, make sure that the cocking rack moves correctly. So I'll just release the shutter. Move the film advance, it goes through a full stroke, comes back to the rest position. That's all looking very promising. So what else do we need done on the body here? Well we've got to get the transfer shaft in. And getting the transfer shaft in we then have to get in the front cam. And this has a spring on it and the spring has to be pre-tensioned before we put the shutter on. And this is a bit of an act. So let's find that shaft to start with. Here it is. I'll get that sitting in place. And that should sit right about there. See if I can get that engaged. We've got to engage with the gear on the cocking rack. And the, the pin on the end of it has to drop into the hole in the body. And usually it's not too much of a fight. And it has to go in at the right angle. Let's see where we are. I think that's probably a one pin, one uh, tooth out from where it needs to be. Let's try it up once. See what happens. That looks too much. Hmm. Let me consider this. You can't see that, can you, because of this piece of metal's in the way. Basically, I'm trying to get the angle of this cam here at the right angle. does have the screw on it, the adjustment screw has been wound right in, so I'm going to wind that right back out. That doesn't really want to move, I think that that's lacquered in place. I'll put a bit of acetone on that. I'd like to get that screw back to the to the neutral position really the start position and then you can wind a little bit more on it if you need it the reason you have an adjustment screw there is to allow uh, basically it takes up 
any tolerances in the system so that when the camera winds it pushes this cam round far enough to latch things up. The amount that that screw's been pushed through there looks like quite a lot to me. I think it's certainly about a tooth's worth of uh, rotation, if you like. And so I'd much rather have that back in the start position and work from there. Well, that didn't go very well. All I've managed to do is break the end off the screw. So we'll put it back in just as it is and uh, see how we get on. This is really just a proof of concept and we'll just see how this thing goes. I will have to drill that screw out and replace it with a new one in the fullness of time. It does occur to me that if someone had wound that screw in, trying to compensate for some perceived fault with the shutter, they may well have overdone it so that the mechanism came up against a hard stop, basically reached its limit of its travel and the film advance lever wanted to push things further and um, that might account for those broken teeth. Might. Anyway, that's in place for the moment. Let's put our little wheel on the front here. Get that cam down behind that little gear there. Is it going to drop in? Yes, it is. Now, we have to wind one and a half turns of tension on this spring, or about one and a half ten turns of tension. Of course we need some way to hold that spring in place. Let's turn this around so you can see what's happening. So I've got a little bracket here, which has a hook on it to hold the spring. So I'll put my bracket on, and I've got another tool which allows me to wind up the tension on that spring fairly conveniently. So there's my bracket on the top and I've got this tool which will allow me to wind that tension up. So let's see how we get on. That's it. It was as simple as that. That's all in place. Check that my meter is where I want it to be with that patch and pointing to the front of the camera. Now we want our spaces for the front of the camera. Now there are 12 spaces and these are saucer shaped and they're set typically so that the edges, the, so that the cup shapes are opposite each other, which allows you lots and lots of springy space that you have to pull them down through. And that gives you the opportunity to adjust the fit of the front relative to the camera body so that you can get the lens mount to film distance correct. But since I'm only just testing this and I'm not interested in setting the focus particularly, I'm just going to pop these washers in all the same way around so that I'm not fighting with them. Earlier cameras, or well, not the 3s, I'm thinking of the Reflex S and the Retina 3S, some of those only had 8 washers, they only had 2 in each position. And that was changed to having 3 in each position, 
and I can only think that was because there wasn't enough tension there sometimes. Okay, so those washers are all in place. Our shutter's in place. Now I need to release the mirror. I push that lever back, release the mirror. The capping plate is down. The shutter should be in the fired position. And all going well, I should be able to get this in place. Now this arm has to fit in between this gap here. I always get it in at the bottom. Then lift the chrome trim back and drop this down slightly. Now I can put two screws through at the bottom here that hold the front on. Just get them started. Just so make sure that you do not lose those washers because those washers will take the opportunity to run away and they'll fall into something you don't want them falling into and you will get the rest of the camera neatly assembled and then they'll make their presence known and it'll be too late, you'll be in a mess. Right, I'll need to find two longer screws to go through the top here to hold the washers in place while I wriggle the transfer shaft into position. These will do nicely. They just need to be started, it's just to make sure I don't lose my washers. Okay, so at the moment the front is in position at the bottom, sitting loosely in place. At the top, we've got to have the mirror has to pass down underneath the ledge on here, and it's not at the moment. Let me loosen that screw up, pull that front away a little bit. Depress the mirror so that it drops down below the, the ledge, it's caught on something. Hang on, let's do this again. Okay, the mirror is now, I pressed it down, it just needs to go down below the ledge on the inside of the uh, shutter, on the back of the shutter. Let's run those screws down lightly, I can do them up tighter on the bottom. Now, I still haven't got my rack, haven't got the shaft engaged with the front of the, the rack on the front here yet. I'm just going to press this across slightly. See if it wriggles into position. Check that the mirror goes up and down. Let's give this a push. I think it's, it's, the teeth aren't, aren't meshing. I'm just going to release the shutter here. Try moving the film advance, and that may drop that gear into position. Yeah, it did. The gear just dropped into position, so the teeth are now meshed. I'll take that screw out, put the correct screw in, run that down loosely. So I've got three of the correct screws in here. One long screw at this corner, but this corner is not particularly critical at this moment. Okay, so now if I turn the film advance, what do we get? Nothing, nothing's moving. Let's just take this bracket off.
that's certainly free. It's locked for some reason. Let's try loosening that screw off and giving it a wriggle. It's free. I think the transfer shaft may be the problem. Let's try lifting the rack at the end. It might not be sitting correctly in place. Now there's no um, no sign that that's jamming there. Oh, it's moving. Yeah, that, that doesn't want to return. No, I'm not, not seeing why. The mirror and capping plate are locked down. The advance lever should be returning. Unless it's not, not it may not be completing its stroke. It might need to move a bit further. Let's have a look under here and see where we are. I oh, may be one tooth out here on on the. Oh yeah, I could easily be. We know we've got a problem with that that shaft. Yeah, this this should be much further along. This, the start position here is just wrong. Okay, I'll take the front off and uh, invest. Well, the reason was simple. This screw that I had through here is too long. And as a result, it was catching the cam. And stopping it from returning easily. So let me get this back together again. Sorry you've just missed a minute or two of action. I'm just putting everything back in position. I have the cams in place. I have the spring tensioned on that cam. I'm putting my spacer washers back in position here. Checking that I haven't got any more loose on the bench. That's all looking pretty good. 
there may be one or one loose in the body somewhere but we'll find out shortly release the shutter because that was cocked and we don't want to start with it in the cocked position we want to start with it in the uncocked position put this in place two of the short the correct screws through the washers at the bottom just to stop the washers getting away put two long screws through at the top I'm going to have to peel this uh, chrome trim back slightly while I do that I'll press the mirror down so that the mirror is not catching on anything run these screws down at the bottom lightly holding the camera I've got these screws keeping my washers in position they better be keeping my washers in position manipulate the front cam that just dropped into position take that screw out put the correct screw in run that lightly down get the other two line this one here I don't care about release the shutter crank the film advance the shutter blades are opening the film advance lever returns to the rest position let's set this to oh, it's about a half a second and it releases but they're going nowhere Let's try it at a faster speed. Okay, so we certainly got a shutter. It needs to be serviced, but we do have a shutter that cocks and fires, and that uh, proves. But our problem was this little broken piece and we're only left with the puzzlers to how that little piece came to be broken but now with a clear conscience I can strip this camera right down clean it completely and reassemble it from scratch with the reasonable expectation that we will have a full working camera afterwards I'm just stripping down the shutter on this camera now I hadn't noticed this before but look at the angle of the flash sync uh, self timer setting lever there that's twisted right out of line from where it should be so what's happened there well I think that's one of those desperate measures that people get into when their camera doesn't seem to work they start pushing and pulling at every lever in the place hoping that they can clear the blockage well they didn't clear the blockage but they've certainly bent that lever camera number three the washer I told you you'd probably not see this again until it was all back together it's all back together everything works might very well indeed just like a bought one as you can see working meter all sorts of exciting stuff its main problem this little piece this cam which is gummy on one side it had lost its teeth how that came to happen exactly well probably never know exactly but it had probably been some of those when parts break some of its natural process it's just something was sticky something was pushed and something broke and other times faults are introduced but the main thing is the fault was diagnosed correctly the part was replaced the camera was serviced and it all functions as a good camera again so that's how you deal with that problem thanks for watching